Hi, welcome to our tutorial on creatables. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what's a creatable? Well, you know in most video games, you have characters that are spawned, enemies coming at you constantly. Well, in Kodu, normally you can just, when you create a character or you create an object, it has no programming in it, so it doesn't do anything. What creatables allows you to do, you can tag a character as creatable, and then all the programming in that character, when it's created and or spawned, it will then be there live and it will be a fully acting, actioning character in your game world. So, I'm going to start with the same shooting fish level that we started with before. And let's see, escape to get into the editor. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete all the characters in this um, using the character delete brush. It's a very quick way to delete everybody in the level. And then we'll start adding new characters. First thing I want to do is I'm going to create my creatable fish. So let me add the fish. And now, in order to mark him as creatable, when I right click on him and get the menu, instead of going to programming like I have been before, I'm going to go to change settings. The settings menu is a whole series of settings that you can set on character. Every character has these available. Um, to navigate through here, using the scroll wheel to move up and down, you can use the arrow keys to move up and down, um, or you can click on one of these elements and it will snap up to the center position. Now, what, what are we looking for? Ah, the creatable. By the way, if you ever wonder what any of these things are, if you go over and click on the help tile, it'll give you information about what they are. So click on creatable, so that's all good. Now escape to get back out. Notice he's glowing green now. That's our way of indicating that he's a creatable. If I ran this level like it was, he wouldn't exist. He's, no, he's not really a character there yet until he's created by another character. So let's figure out, let's add another character that's going to create our fish. In this case, I'm just going to do have a rock. I like rocks, they work. So I've added a rock, and I'm going to go to program him, and I'm going to say every, let's say, four seconds, he's going to create one of my new creatable fishes. So timer, four seconds, action, create, and here where we normally pick the object we're creating, notice there's this new option now called creatables, and that's where the things that we've marked as creatable are stored. And since we only have one, that's the one I want to pick. So I want to have a way of keeping track of how many fish are currently alive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the scores, in this case the white score, to keep track of that. So every time I create a fish, I'm also going to add one to the white score. So game, score, add one point to the white score. And as we showed before, I'm going to indent this so that every four seconds, what's going to happen, we will create a new fish and we will add one point to the white score. Now, the way I want to end this game is saying that the user can keep shooting fish as long as he can, but if he gets to the point where there's five fish, that means he hasn't been shooting fast enough and the game is over. So here I can test for that and say the white score is five, then the game is over. So that way, that's how we're, we're looking at the white counter, which is counting the number of active fish, and we're saying, hey, if that ever gets to five, the user's gotten too slow, and that's game over. So escape to get back out of this, and now let's go ahead and program the fish. Now if you remember last time, the fish, all the fish did was wander around back and forth on the path. So we need that again, so we'll say move on the path, so they continue just to find the path. When they get to any intersection on the path, any of the nodes, they just pick a random direction of the other to go down, um, and that gives them that kind of nice free form feel to them. But 
Now, we also want to be able to keep track of when they die, both to, so that we can decrement the white score and also so we can give points to the user for, this, for the score. So the way we can do that is we can test their health. When the health gets to zero, they're dead. So then we can say, OK, in that case, we'll subtract one point from the white score, which is what we've been using to keep track of the number of fish that are currently alive. And we will also add one point to the red score, which is the user's score. That's how many points the game player gets. Um, let me remember to indent that over. So when the fish dies, subtract one from white and add one to red. So I think that's what we need there. Now, the one thing that's still missing is we need to create our character again, our player character. So we will add a kodu. This is exactly like we did in the previous tutorial. So I'll go through this a little bit fast. I'm going to program him to shoot missiles um, using the space bar and use the arrow keys to turn left and right. So keyboard, spacebar, and the, oh, there's the shoot, and we want him to shoot a missile. Here, keyboard, left key, want him to turn to the left. Um, keyboard, right key, turn to the right. Okay, this is exactly the same thing that we saw last time, so it should look familiar. If I went through it a little fast, go back to the previous tutorial, and I go through it much slower there. So let's see if this all works now. Click on play, and the rock starts generating fish, and you can see that the white score is keeping track of how many fish are alive. And let me see if I can actually kill some of these guys. Or not. Okay, I didn't kill any of them at all. Um, part of the problem is that you, the reload rate for firing missiles is very slow. So I'm going to hit escape to go back into the editor. And remember when I went and clicked on the settings for the fish? Well, one of the other settings, and I'm going to do this on the Kodu, so right click on Kodu, choose change settings. One of the other settings down here is the reload time for the missiles. And I'm going to pull that way down. This means I'll be able to fire a lot quicker. So escape to back out of this menu. Click on the giant green triangle to run. And now I should be able to fire missiles quite a bit quicker and hopefully keep up with these guys. Or not. Okay, so I'm still a pretty lousy shot. Anyway, so there you have it. That gives you the ability to use the scores to keep track of game state. In this case, we're using the scores to keep track of how many fish are currently alive. You're also using the scores just to keep them as scores. We showed you how to take a character, add some programming to it, mark it as creatable, and then you can have another character create these or spawn them as much as they want. So that should give you all the basics you need to create your own games. So go for it.